The Soviet KGB and the US CIA were intelligence agencies synonymous with the Cold War. Often seen as confrontational, each seeks to preserve its position as a global superpower and maintain dominance within its own sphere of influence. Their greatest success is arguably preventing a nuclear war, but how successful have they actually been in achieving their goal? Are technological advances as important as espionage? As a result, both have a mole in their agency. This video specifically focuses on a CIA officer who went a double agent and leaked the CIA classified document. Stay tuned. Tonight we are going to take you inside a real-life spy scandal. You're about to meet the mom who helped bring down perhaps the worst traitor in CIA history. Andy Grimes first met Aldrich James, who everyone called Rick, in the early 1970s when they were both young After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 and the end of the Cold War, the era of traditional espionage did not end. In the 1990s and early 2000s, four key U.S. intelligence officers who were still spying for Russia were arrested on espionage charges. The first mole caught was Aldrich Ames. Aldrich Hazen Ames was arrested by the FBI on February 21, 1994 in Arlington, Virginia on charges of espionage. At the time of his arrest, Ames had been working for the Central Intelligence Agency CIA, for 31 years, spying for the Russians. Since 1985, his wife, Rosario Ames, who was arrested with him, had aided and abetted his espionage. Ames was a Russian-speaking CIA agent and a specialist in Russian intelligence, including the Soviet Union's foreign intelligence agency, the KGB. His first overseas assignment was to Ankara, Turkey, where he targeted Russian intelligence agents for recruitment. He later worked in New York and Mexico City, Mexico. On April 16, 1985, he gave a confidential report to KGB officials at the U.S. Embassy while at CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, under the administration of the Soviet CIA Division to Eastern Europe. Shortly after the Soviet Union was in Washington, D.C., the KGB paid him $50,000. In the summer of 1985, Ames met several times with a Russian diplomat who passed him secret information about the CIA and FBI's human resources and technical operations against the Soviet Union. In December 1985, Ames met with KGB officials in Moscow at the Congress in Bogota, Colombia. In July 1986, Ames was transferred to Rome, Italy. In Rome, Ames continued to meet with the KGB, including Russian diplomats in Rome and KGB officials in Moscow. At the end of the mission in Rome, Ames received instructions from the KGB for covert communications in Washington, D.C., to which he would be assigned. In addition, the KGB wrote to Ames that he was paid $1.88 million during the four years he volunteered. Upon his return to Washington, D.C. in 1989, Ames continued to pass classified documents to the KGB using dead drops or prearranged hiding places where he would leave the documents to be picked up later by KGB officers from the Soviet embassy in Washington. In return, the KGB left money and instructions for Ames, usually in other dead drops. In the meantime, the CIA and FBI learned that Russian officials who had been recruited by them were being arrested and executed. These human sources provided critical intelligence information about the Soviets, which was used by U.S. policymakers in determining U.S. foreign policy. Following analytical reviews and receipt of information about Ames's unexplained wealth, the FBI opened an investigation in May 1993. FBI special agents and investigative specialists conducted intensive physical and electronic surveillance of Ames during a 10-month investigation. A search of Ames' residence revealed documents and other information linking Ames to Russian foreign intelligence agencies. On October 13, 1993, professional investigators noticed Ames' chalk mark on a mailbox confirming to the Russians that he intended to meet with them in Bogota, Colombia. On November 1, special agents observed him and separately his Russian handler in Bogota. 
When Ames planned foreign travel, including a trip to Moscow, as part of his official duties, a plan to arrest him was approved. Aldrich Ames and his wife pleaded guilty on April 28, 1994. Aldrich Ames was sentenced to life in prison without parole. On October 20, 1994, Rosario Ames was sentenced to 63 months in prison. Ames was later interrogated by FBI agents, at which point he detailed the identities of CIA and FBI human resources, some of whom were executed by Soviet authorities. Under the plea agreement, Ames forfeited his U.S. assets and $547,000 was transferred to the Justice Department's Victim Assistance Fund, 